How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm gonna to talk about why DWAC has mooned and what the heck is a stack. Before I begin, hit that like button and check out Mint Mobile. If you are still on other carriers paying $50 to $90 a month, this is just ridiculous. I've used Mint Mobile for the past few years and it costs as little as $15 a month. Switch over and literally save hundreds of dollars Check out my referral link down in the video description below. I got a comment asking me to cover DWAC, so here it is. First, let's take a look at the chart. It's hovered around $10 for the longest time. It's reached a stock price of $94, so you can easily see that it had a 940% gain. If you bought after the frenzy of about 400% gain, you would still have doubled your money. You guys probably saw this headline. Shares of SPAC tied to Donald Trump's social media venture nearly quadruples in heavy trading. First thing I saw is an acronym I did not recognize, SPAC. What is a SPAC? Spackle? It stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. This company is formed by a group of people with expertise in that area with the intention of making a deal with another company. Now this brand new company has nothing to do with the company that they're trying to acquire at first. They raise money themselves with an IPO from hedge funds, investors, sponsors, you name it. At the time of a SPAC IPO, they have no business operations and they will not disclose what their target company is going to be. Now these SPACs, they do have a company in mind, but they're just not gonna tell you what it is in order to avoid a lot of paperwork and regulatory approvals. So for the investors, you are essentially writing them a blank check. You don't know where they're gonna use it and you're just crossing their fingers that the people know what they're doing and that eventually you're gonna make money from it. Now it's not completely a blank check because they do have a time limit usually of around two years. So if they do not make a deal within this time frame, and it could be longer, then they have to return the funds to the investors. Usually what happens after these people invest is that they put it into a trust fund interest bearing, and then sometimes the interest is used as working capital for the SPAC. After they successfully do an acquisition, do some kind of deal with another company, then they're gonna be listed on a public stock exchange. Now, why would companies choose the SPAC way rather than do a traditional IPO? Is because it's faster. They can complete this within a few months rather than a traditional IPO, which is six months, to 12 months long. This is a win-win situation for the target company because then they can sell to the SPAC at a premium price because the SPAC has a time limit and they have to do some kind of deal before the time limit is over or else they have to return all the money to the investors. On the other hand, if a company goes the traditional route where they go through a private equity firm, the private equity firm usually tries to get as low a price as possible so that later on when the company does IPO, there is more profit. A company may also find joining us back very advantageous because they have expertise in the field such as financiers, business executives, and various connections. In 2010, two SPACs were created. In 2016, $3.2 billion was invested into various SPACs. In 2019, $13.6 billion. In 2020, 247 SPACs were created with a total of 80 billion invested. Now just in Q1 of 2021, 96 billion was already invested. But sometime in Q2, regulation got a bit tighter so that they have to file more paperwork. And so suddenly the number of SPACs suddenly plummeted. An example of a SPAC is Chamath Palipapitaya SPAC which is a social capital Hedo Sophia Holdings. They bought 49% stake in Virgin Galactic for $800 million. At the time, this means it's a valuation of about 1.6 billion. Today, it is valued at 5.18 billion. So they did pretty well over there. So now we understand about SPACs. Let's talk about DWAC. Various hedge funds together put $293 million into DWAC. They are then gonna use this money to fund a Trump media startup called Truth Social. The CEO of that company says they're gonna use that money to fund a video on demand service called TMTG Plus, a non-woke entertainment programming. I don't know what non-woke means. Let me look this up. Woke is an alert to injustice in society, especially racism. So. If they're non-woke, does this mean they are ignorant of racism? I think what that means is they're probably going to sidestep 
drawing attention to injustice in society and racism. So they're just going to put, you know, kind of like entertainment stuff and ignoring social issues. Now we have to understand that Trump started this media company after he was banned from Twitter and other social media platforms after the Capitol riot of January 6th. Let's step back and take a look at the headlines. CNBC says, two hedge funds sell stakes in Trump's back firm, DWAC after merger news. Both Lighthouse and Saba Capital sold off all, not just a little bit, all of their unrestricted shares. It's not just 10% or half of it. They sold everything they could. This is not showing very good confidence that the elevated price level, it's going to stay where it is. This news by itself should give you pause before you invest. Personally, I'm staying away from this and not touching it with a 10 foot pole. Remember in investing, you don't have to take every single opportunity that comes your way. Only the ones that you're highly confident that you will make money then you should invest. This particular DWAC, it's pretty opaque. And if you do invest, I think it's a very short term thing. It's very, very volatile. The expected volatility, well, it just went up 800% in two days. It can just very well drop a 90% because of this huge gain in such a short amount of time. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this explanation of SPAC. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more.